Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name's Corinne Brad, and I've got another great bag project to show you today, which is made from four strips of fabric, or eight strips if you count the lining. So you can make it in a small size, which is great for holding bits and bobs like cotton reels. You can make it small handbag sized, or you can make it large shopping, boat, shopping tote sized. Just as long as you remember that your strips have got to be four times as long as they are wide. For example, with a shopping tote, I've actually made this with a jelly roll, and I've actually sewn three strips of jelly roll together to make my strip, so you've got a lot more colour and pattern going on in that bag. But this one here, I've sewn two strips together, and the simple one is just one strip of each fabric. So, I will show you how to get started. Let me pop these to one side. I've pre-cut and sewn some 11 centimetre squares of fabric in two strips. So at the minute they're 11 centimetres wide by 41 centimetres long because you've got to allow for your 5mm seam allowance all the way around. And the way that you put them together is rather like a Maltese cross. So I'm going to sew this to this. It's a great explanation that, isn't it? I'm going to sew one long or part of the long edge of one strip to the short end of another, like so. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the other two strips. so that when they are together, you've got that windmill shape. It's important that you know, or you, you, know, you stick to one either clockwise or anti-clockwise way of working, otherwise you might get in a bit of a muddle. So once you've sewn the two strips together in pairs, you can then sew up this centre seam, right sides together, matching up those middle seam lines. And each time I'm sewing these seams, I'm just leaving a 5mm seam allowance at the end of each seam because we need to turn some corners in a minute and it's much easier if you have stopped just before the seam, uh, just before the end of the fabric. It gives you more room to play with. So there's your windmill shape. And now all you need to do is sew the long edges together you say. I've got three on one side and four on the other. That's how it's supposed to be. So just line up. You don't have to do this quite so much if you're using continuous strips of one colour of fabric, but I just wanted to mix it up a bit to get a bit more pattern in the bag, because I do like, oh, there's so many fabrics out on the market, I do like to uh, try and use as much of them as possible. straight up here. So you can see that's going to create the bottom point of the bag and this is going to start to create the slanted front. So I'm just going to sew the others together in the same way. And just the final side. And 
and there you go. Turn it the right side out and you can see how that forms the structure of the bag. Out of blocks set on end, it's quite a nice little shape. So what I've done is I have created a lining in exactly the same way but from continuous strips of fabric and I'm going to pop my bag inside my lining and if you match up these seams here Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, when I have made the lining, I haven't made it in exactly the same way as the bag. What I've done is in one seam I've left a little gap. That gap's about four centimetres. It yet remains to be seen whether that gap is large enough to turn the bag the right way out. But we do like a, a bit of a challenge on the Craft Channel. And no problem is insurmountable when you have a stitch ripper. So pin those lower points first of all, and then the upper points, before I pin them, I actually want to insert a bag handle. Very quickly how to make the bag handle. This is a piece of fabric about 42 centimetres long. It was about 5 centimetres wide and I've simply folded in, finger pressed in 5mm on either side. Laying a piece of cotton tape just to make sure it doesn't stretch too much in the middle and then folded it in half and what I'm going to do is top stitch down the other side of it as well for neatness. And what you'll find with most machines, your feed dogs should do all the work. If you've got your presser foot set up correctly and your feed dogs are undamaged, you can do strips like this. You don't even need to hold it. So you've got two straps now, because I made one earlier. And I'm going to pin these straps inside the top points of your bag. So, you need to pop it inside. Pin it in so it just extends the top point. and then put your hand inside the bag because you've pinned these bottom points already. You need to grab that strap. Make sure it hasn't twisted. It probably was an easier way of doing this, but I'm committed now, so we'll carry on in this method. And pin it again there. Flip it over. Grab it, pull it inside, keeping it flat. Make sure it's not twisted before you then pin to the last corner of your bag.
and then you can stitch all the way around the top of the bag. What I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to take my accessories box off because it makes it much, much easier. Start anywhere on the bag that you like. down to your pin. And when you get to that strap, rather than sewing actually on the point, just sew across it. Just got hooked up on something there. Just sew across it so you have a flat like a truncated point where the strap is. And again with this bag, to be honest, it's quite a good beginner's project because it, it's just straight line stitching. You know, I can straight line stitch all day. But of course there will be a moment of truth in a minute when I just check that my handles are actually where they are supposed to be on this bag. I'm back down to the beginning. And because you've left a gap in the lining, you don't have to worry about leaving a gap as you're sewing the two pieces together. You just need to remember where you left the gap in the lining. And then simply pull the bag outer through that gap. I say pull, ease gently, coerce, generally manipulate. If you take it easy, you can get all of your bag through that small gap. And then if you're a perfectionist, simply fold those raw edges in and top stitch. If you're not a perfectionist like me, simply give it a shake to push the lining inside the bag. And there you have now, in an ideal world, I would press that and top stitch that to keep the top of that bag nice and neat. But, you know, you can knock up a bag like this in probably 20, 30 minutes with no problem whatsoever. And they make great gifts as well. If you're giving someone a couple of bottles of bub bubble bath or something for a, a present, don't buy a packaged gift pack box. Buy the individual ones, pop them in a bag, put a bow on it. Happy Christmas, happy birthday. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave you today. I hope you enjoyed that bag demonstration. I hope you will make your own from all those bits of fabric and jelly rolls that you've got left over, and you will join us again very, very soon. Thank you for having us. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed 